Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is May 27th, Monday, Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all of the beautiful men and women who have served our country. Let's keep them in memory today. And thank you for getting me a day off of work. That is awesome, especially because I get the time to cook this beautiful guy right here. And what better way to celebrate freedom and our troops fighting for that freedom than by cooking a badass T-bone steak. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to dry it off. and It'll give me a better sear, better crust. For those of you who don't really know beef stuff, this would come off the... I'm having some technical difficulties here. This would come off the sheet! There we go. Alright. Trying to get all the moisture out of it. But yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna be throwing that, guys. This is the first time I'm using it. Gonna use this nice little sous vide guy over here. That's what I'm gonna be doing with that. Let me just set you guys up, talk to you a little bit about what's going on today. So, I have off of work today, and I'm gonna be going to Tyson's Playground. I'm gonna be squatting today. Finally, guys, I'm finally back to regular scheduled programming, which is fucking awesome. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is Nationals meat prep, like this starts today. Um, you know, my boy Russ, he's gonna be competing at Worlds in literally two weeks, which is mind boggling, that's so, so soon. Um, he's been working super hard since Nationals, he kind of took a hiatus from competing since then to focus just on just working in the shadows, building momentum, and that's exactly what's happened. I'm really excited to see that, and I know once he competes and I see that matchup between him and Brett, it's definitely gonna be super motivating and kind of light that there's another dimension to the fire that gets lit when you watch your direct competitor like compete somewhere else. Like it gets you, it gets you amped up um, in a different way. So I'm really excited for that. I'm not going to cook this right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that in the sous vide, and while I'm at the gym, um, I'm going to let that cook in the sous vide. For those of you who don't know what a sous vide is, it kind of temperature controls everything. Um, so you just fill up a bath with water and it will literally cook it to the temperature you set it and no more. So you can leave it for as many hours as you need to and it won't overcook, which is it's really cool. And then I'll be cooking it, um, like searing it right after with the gym. But right now, I'm going to cook some eggs and eat some bread because if I ate steak before the gym, I'd probably throw up and shit myself. Who knows if it would happen at the same time? I have no idea. But I have to be able to squat, so I'm just going to stick to carbs and protein and easily digestible foods. And I will see you guys when I'm done cooking it. What's going on guys? Breakfast is done. We got the egg whites with chipotle mayo and cholula and I'm going to be taking creatine now guys and the reason I say now is that I've always taken a pre-workout that had it in it like Epoch Alpha which is DeNovo's old supplement um, but recently I have switched to almost exclusively taking Utopia for my workouts so that does not have creatine in it so I will be adding about... 5-ish, 7-ish grams of creatine to my uh, juice in the morning. And yeah, I'm going to get to eating this and then I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to prepare that delicious T-bone. So, I'll see you guys in a second. This is not a USDA prime or any crazy sort of cut of beef. It's just a nice looking um, porterhouse that I saw that I was just like, I'm in the mood for a steak. So... First thing we're going to do is very heavily, very liberally salt this steak. We're going to do that not only on both sides, but we're going to get it, oh shit, <laughs> I'm not going to use all that. We're going to get it on both sides of the steak and then we're also going to get it onto the fat to give it kind of that, you know, bring out those um, very savory, beefy sort of flavors that we get out of a good cut of meat. You know, that taste that kind of just coats your entire palate. Um, so, that should be sufficient salt. Let me just get more on this tenderloin. and get some pepper on it. Also, depending on how you like your steak, also go very liberally on the pepper. I like my steak to have that kind of smoky taste to it, so, you know, 
especially if it's not like a naturally really fatty cut. Um, I really like to bring out that kind of flavor in the beef. If it were like a really, really marbled, you know, USDA prime or dry aged or Wagyu, then I'd be like, okay, yeah, let me just put some salt on it. But for this, I'll definitely take more of the peppery sort of flavor. And then the last thing, um, we're just gonna give it a nice little sensual massage in, uh, in some oil here. I'm gonna throw it into the sous vide bag right now with a little bit of time and it will be ready to cook. It'll be ready to cook at 128 degrees while I'm at the gym, which will bring it to a nice sort of rare, medium rare kind of temperature, and then we'll sear it off and it'll probably be perfect medium rare. Press start and boom, it's cooking. So that's it guys. See you guys in a couple hours with this steak. It'll come out and it'll be looking like a gray pile of mush, but it'll look better once I sear it. So right now I'm gonna get ready for the gym, just pack up my stuff. And again, using Utopia as my pre-workout. If this focus, boom, Utopia's new flavor, Tropical Punch. Um, it is a banana-y tropical punch of sorts. And it's delicious, code Nori, denovosups.com. So I'm just gonna make sure this is good, everything looks okay, and we're gonna go to the gym now. Live for America, how you doing?
So you guys just saw that top set of eight paws, 496, felt about RP six and a half to seven. The goal for today was about six and a half, so I overshot it a tiny, tiny bit, but again, that's kind of, those deviations are a little bit negligible, um, especially in the higher rep ranges, like there are a lot of things that will contribute to that compounding fatigue with that, within a set. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy with that. I've definitely never done that pause. Usually that is working sets for regular squats. Um, that's what I'm gonna be doing on Mondays right now since I'm not yet, you know, I feel like I'm ready to get back to 100%, you know, regular scheduled programming, but I think it makes the most sense right now to really just pause on the good day um, because control is still something that I'm hesitant about and I'll be more confident and more likely to execute on this day feeling good if I pause. The second day of the week that I squat is a little bit weaker, so I can kind of get away with just working with the percentages that I have to. Um, they're usually pretty low. And that's what I'm just gonna be doing going forward. You saw the drop down sets, they felt just as hard as the top one. But I'm gonna move on to bench press now. It's been like 20 minutes and I'm still out of breath. But, you know, it is what it is. Power lifters, they lose their athleticism, they lose their cardio. I remember the days that I used to be able to run, but those are no more. So let's move on to bench. My knee feels the worst it's felt in a couple weeks. It keeps catching when I walk, when I turn, it twinges. Squats, ironically, have not been causing too many issues. I don't really know what to do about this right now. Uh, probably gonna schedule another doctor's appointment. But it's hard to have incentive to like go get it checked out when I'm able to do all of my competition lifts without problem and continue to progress. But then, you know, it just gives me trouble doing like normal everyday things. So, I'm finished with my workout. The last thing you saw was those stiff leg deadlifts. I did some accessory row stuff, but that's not interesting to watch. So we're gonna head back to the apartment and I'm gonna show you guys how I finished cooking up that porterhouse. So we'll see you guys then. And we are back. The T-bone is definitely done. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna shut the sous vide off. I'm gonna take it out. This is the steak right now. It doesn't look that great because it is all gray and not really charred or seared in any way yet. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is a little bit different than what I guess you would normally see. So this is the Porter House. As you guys can see, I cut a piece of fat off so we can see that it's nice, medium, rare. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna melt down some of this ghee, which for those of you who don't know, ghee is clarified butter. It is a garlic ghee. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna melt it down, I'm gonna cover the steak in it, and then I am going to I have butane torches. I'm gonna blow torch the steak and give it a really nice sear. So I'll get back to you guys with the sweet, sensual video. And uh, we're gonna cue the uh, sexual jazz music in three, two, one. so excited to eat this. So you guys can see right here, for those of you who are not steak aficionados, this is the New York strip side of the porterhouse and this is the filet mignon side of the porterhouse. 
Some of you probably didn't know that a porterhouse actually has a filet on it. It's two different cuts of meat on the filet. The T-bone breaks up the tenderloin and the strip loin. So some people call it the best of both worlds. In my opinion, the ribeye is the best steak, but no matter. This is not even like a USDA prime cut of meat. Like this was just a regular, look at that. This is just a regular porterhouse. Marbling wasn't that great. If you know how to prepare a piece of meat, you can make it taste good regardless. The sous vide, the great thing about it is when it's slowly cooked and you vacuum seal it and let the, the, the flavor stay in and nothing leaks out, like none of the fat leaks out, it all just concentrates, um, you get a way more tender piece of meat. And then I really like torching it. I think the flavor from torching the steak, um, it, just, it just has a very... It like enhances that butteriness, in my opinion, to the steak versus just, um, you know, searing it on a pan, especially if you don't live somewhere where you can really crank up the heat, um, because most of the time the temperature you have to sear steak at is going to just smoke the shit out of whatever room you're cooking in, and I'm in an apartment and can't really do that. So this is the filet. Mm. No. I'm not a big fan of filet. I don't think it has a lot of flavor usually, but this, I did some good shit here, guys. Just finished filming the third episode of the Four Horsemen podcast, which you guys should be seeing. Um, you should have already seen it, actually, because this video is going to be coming out after that. But we got into some really deep topics, um, which is something that, you know, we kind of like scratch on the surface level, but this time kind of really dove right into it but that's all i have for the video today guys it is currently 12 45 so i'm gonna get ready for bed now uh last night i spent uh pretty much up until four in the morning doing all my programming for my clients so tonight i'm gonna try to get in bed early well early for me that's it for today guys i'm gonna go shower i'm gonna go to bed remember guys no bad days um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you got to do. I'll see you guys in the next video, which by the way, is going to be a pretty sick, it's going to be a pretty sick video. I was very lucky to have my man Hunter, um, which I will link his channel down below. Very young, very talented, uh, videographer. I think you guys are really going to enjoy the video. So stay tuned for that. Take care guys.